am very blessed and honored to be with such a dynamic entrepreneur. She started her career as a lawyer and she's now an incredible health coach. And she's a founder of SAOW, Star Aniseed Organic Whole Foods. And um, she, be I believe, started in her own kitchen 10 years ago. And the other day I drove past her wonderful shop with an amazing friend. She's a communal friend, Marcia Collins, Aka, the Zumba queen of New South Wales, Sydney. So I'm very blessed that Marcia introduced us. So welcome, Sula, to Wellness Spring. Thank you for having me. Thank Pleasure. you for having me. Pleasure. So would you like to tell the audience a little bit about your background? Because it's quite extreme to be a lawyer and then go into <laughs> health and wellness. Yeah, so I'm a 47-year-old mum of two teenagers. Um, as you said, I'm the founder of Star and East Organic Whole Foods, which I started in my home kitchen in 2010, and it now has its own home retail store, which I called Broth Bar and Lada in Bronte, which was founded at the end of 2015. Real and traditional foods, cooking instructor, health coach, public speaker, originally from the Gold Coast. So I really love the sun and the surf and the great outdoors. Um, I worked as a corporate lawyer for 10 years before I had kids at a top tier law firm and uh, in-house counsel at a large corporate. And it was really a series of health crises and spectacular crashes with rock bottom um, that made me pivot and take an alternative path, which was quite unexpected. So I ended up um, in hospital as a burnt out corporate lawyer in my mid twenties and was out of action for two months. And that was a really big wake up call for me to start to take a cold, hard look at my, my lifestyle. So too many late nights working around the clock, seven days a week in artificial lighting, in a pressure cooker environment, leading a very sedentary lifestyle, divorce from nature, eating takeout food three times a day, mostly of refined grains, low fat everything, just using off the supermarket shelf, personal care products, cleaning products, popping pharmaceuticals and painkillers like candy, um, drinking tap water, binge drinking on alcohol, I was on the contraceptive pill. I was in a vocation and a relationship that didn't really set my soul on fire. So basically just leading a life that most people think is just normal, normal, normal. And it is for most people. Um, but it really unraveled my health and my happiness and my body for better or for worse felt the disconnect poignantly. And it led to a long shopping list of health issues. Um, so I decided to basically at first, I just lent on the conventional healthcare system, uh, and the conventional food pyramid and started eating, uh, you know, um, actually we started adopting a vegetarian diet because I thought that was being super healthy because that was a so strong dietary messages that the government and big food is sending us. Don't eat too much. If any red meat, eat low fat, eat a lot of grains, cut out saturated fat. Um, but when my health issues continued on that, and when I got no relief from the conventional medical system with its band-aid approach of symptom suppression, and particularly when our little 11 month old baby boy who we were also raising as a vegetarian ended up in hospital, that was like a second big wake up call for me. And I decided at that point to take matters into my own hands because I wanted something better for my life and my family's life. And I started researching ancestral diets uh, which were gaining popularity in America and just started gaining some popularity in Australia too. Um, and I started looking at what our ancestors pre-agricultural revolution and industrial revolution were eating, um, this nutrient dense traditional whole foods, high in animal fat, completely unprocessed. And they all lived in a state of vibrant, robust health and happiness, free of chronic illness and degenerative disease. And that was, you know, very alluring for me. Um, I resisted it for a good 12 months. And then after doing a copious amounts of research, I finally raised the right white flag um, and um, started, you know, making this food my home in my kitchen because back then, you know, this was about 15 years ago in Sydney, you know, about around the time of 2007, no one was making and selling 
you know, bone broth or kombucha. I mean, it's hard to fathom that there was no kombucha on the market at that time, but once upon a time there wasn't. So I just basically got back into the kitchen, started making bone broth, slow cooked casseroles, chicken liver pate, sauerkraut, kombucha, activated nuts, raw treats without any refined sugar. And my little family, we went from barely surviving to thriving um, within a matter of months, if not weeks. You know, my long shopping list of health issues miraculously disappeared. And that's when it really hit home for me, the power of food as medicine and making simple lifestyle tweaks that can profoundly influence our health. And it was, um, I never set out to start a business um, I was just happy, you know, making this food for myself and being, you know, a full-time mum. But it was persistent friends who insisted on buying my food. And then through word of mouth, it was friends of friends who came knocking at the door and the circle just kept expanding and expanding until one mother's helper over the years turned into about 20 and we we're tripping over each other in the house and dehydrators and stock pots everywhere. And I really had no choice um, but to open up a retail store with a bit of a monumental push from the universe. Uh, and that's how Broth Bar and Larder started. And within that time, I was also doing cooking classes because I could see that women were just so hungry to understand about um, how to nourish their families. And I felt it was very much my duty and obligation and privilege and pleasure to teach women how to make this nourishing food themselves in their own home. And I could see people were so confused with all the conflicting information about nutrition out there. So people kept asking me questions, which just organically, for want of a better word, led to sitting down, um, doing one-on-one -on -one health coaching sessions with them, which ended up becoming a full-time job. And I was asked to help coach the Sydney Roosters in 2012 and got them from the very bottom of the ladder to the top of the ladder in one year by doing one thing, we changed their diet. Um, and then the cooking classes and the health coaching kind of morphed into uh, touring Australia with a holistic dietitian, Marika Rodenstein, who's Australia's leading gut health expert and Cressa Institute functional medicine practitioner. And now it's all online. So all my cooking classes are online and it's all wrapped up in a food as medicine digital package, which is basically the culmination of the past 15 years of my, of, uh, my life's work, um, where there's over six hours of nutritional talks, five online cooking workshops, a 60 page how-to manual. Uh, and we do go into length um, and discuss the fundamentals of robust nutrition, robust gut health, and how to create a healthy toxic free home because your health of your home is also really important and not just what you eat, but what you put on your skin and, and what you're breathing in. So that's a bit of a, a potted summary of how I got from uh, lawyer to now broth queen mm -hmm. uh, and promoting food as medicine. Wow, you covered a lot of information there. I was like, Ooh, oh my God. So we might um, break it down a little bit. Um, I was curious that you mentioned that you grew up in the Gold Coast because when I arrived from France, that's where we did our quarantine. And mm -hmm. I would highly recommend that you go and talk to all the quarantine hotels um, tell them about your wonderful work because nutrition wise was shocking as you know i'm vegan and they were giving me so many things full of um, milk or animal products and it was a continual battle with the chef in the hotel and I would say, stop sending me so much food and so much more would appear. Um, but loads of junk they were sending as well, you know, like crisps and, you know, different snacks, which were definitely not healthy. So maybe that's a little sideline for you as well. Um, well, the institutions are a really hard beast to tackle. So hospital, hospitals, retirement villages, nursing homes, um, like they are very much guided by the Australian Dietetics Association and the conventional food pyramid. And you've got to kind of look who is behind the food pyramid. There's a lot of vested interest there with deep pockets and, you know, mm. big food. Uh, so until that changes, I personally find that 
where I gain the most traction is educating people at the grassroots level because you just keep butting up with the institutions and say, oh, it's got the Heart Foundation tick of approval. This is approved by a dietitian. And of course, dietetics is all about, you know, low fat, high grain. They pay no credence or respect to the source and processing of food or the quality of the calories. So for me, at this point in time on this planet right here and now, my work is educating the mums, um, the ordinary people in the street and educating them on buying the best quality food they can afford um, and, and working with people at the grassroots level. That's wonderful. And talking about grassroots, what is your nationality and your parents and have you got any siblings and what were they into your parents? What did you grow up yeah, with? So my... The reason I'm asking is because bone broth, you mentioned bone broth. Um, that is like um, uh, so popular, it's almost going viral worldwide, you know. And yeah. I know when I was growing up in Wales, my mother was forever cooking bones and making various broths. And I think sometimes when we go back, because you mentioned ancestors, when we go back to our ancestors and what did they do? They use all natural food, what we might call organic now, because it was made with love in their back gardens or in orchards or woods nearby and nature took care of everything. There was no pesticides and things like that. And our grandmothers and great grandmothers made the most delicious, nutritious food full of everything that we, our body needs. So I'm curious about your background. Yeah, so my background, my parents are Greek Cypriot. So they were both born in Cyprus and migrated here uh, in the 1950s when they were teenagers. And I've always been really fascinated about what um, my ancestors, ate. my granddad, my dad's dad lived to 105. Wow. And um, when I look at the kind of lifestyle and diet that they led, it's not surprising that they led to that, you know, that there were a lot of centenarians um, in yesteryear that don't, you know, it's not as common nowadays. Um, and also the quality of our life nowadays is not a patch on our ancestors. So they led a lifestyle that was in harmony with their biology. So from the food they ate, so all natural food from the land, you know, nothing processed, you know, their vegetables weren't covered in glyphosate like ours are now. It was all local. They ate in season, in harmony with the seasons and mother nature. And it wasn't just their food food it was what I call like they really dialed in what I call these eight pillars or foundations of health so what you eat is uh, is one only one aspect of our health a very significant one but it's one of eight our health is also you know what we drink and how we move and the quality of our sleep and how and what we breathe and our mindset and whether we're having fun, play and deep meaningful connections with other people, you know, a community and a tribe and how much time we spend in nature. And when I look at my granddad, for example, they were eating, you know, food off the land, you know, drinking rainwater. They were outside and moving their bodies every day, getting plenty of sunshine. Um, they, he swam like every day, well into his 90s. They lived in small communities and tribes, which really is so important and nourishes our soul. And, you know, they raised children, not in a nuclear family, but the whole village, you know, helped to raise children. Um, and, you know, family and extended family and the tribe was just, you know, so important to their, you know, day-to-day -day life and, and sense of well-being. Um, and of course, you know, they weren't, slathering toxic chemicals you know on their body and after you know artificial fragrances and they just use very simple cleaning products so they basically led a life that was more congruent with their biology their dna so my mission in life is basically to educate people on the evolutionary inputs that make us hum and thrive compare it to our lifestyle and just bridge the gap so reduce the mismatch 
between our genes and our biology, basically, and how we're treating our body with these eight pillars of health, our lifestyle factors, and just reduce that mismatch. And when we reduce the mismatch, when we basically reduce the toxicity in our life and saturate ourselves with nourishment in all its forms, that's when we can start to, you know, our children can grow and function properly. We can perform our best and reach our true potential, you know, and lead a happy, vibrant, shiny life and, you know, share our unique gifts with the world because why else are we here? Exactly. And that is our purpose to live a happy, meaningful life. Um, talking about your gra grandfather living until 105, I know in Genoa, because we spent some time there, um, apparently they're the oldest living people on the planet today because they do have community. They have like community centers and they all meet together and they all look after one another. And it's, um, family is so important to them, you know, and with the family, you know, they pass on their oral traditions and their recipes and remedies and uh, so forth. And they encourage people to do things together. So I loved about France when I, you know, live in there. There's so many family things, outdoor sports, outdoor concerts, outdoor, you know, events. And a lot of the time they look after the locals. So everything is free and the council put on free events. What was it like growing up um, in the Gold Coast? I know it's the heart of the sunshine. You know, what did your parents do for a living? What did you eat when you were growing up? Yeah, so we had, um, it was a combination of both um, eating Greek food that my you know, mother would, would make from scratch. So we had, you know, I was blessed to have a lot of Greek food, which was wonderful. Although growing up at that time, when you're the only Greek in your school, you know, with dark curly hair and hairy arms and legs, you know, you don't want your lunchbox to be full of moussaka. You know, mm -hmm. you want to have the veggie white sandwich. So there was a lot of, for me, um, as all school age kids and teenagers go through a lot of resisting um, my ethnicity because you just want to fit in. You know, the desire to fit in and not be seen as different is greater at that point in your life than the desire to be healthy and embrace, you know, your ethnic roots. Um, but my parents also, in addition to Greek food, and we, we had a lot of home um, grown vegetables. So dad always grew a lot of vegetables, especially herbs. So they were always chopped up in salads. Um, my parents also were, uh, sadly, were quite seduced because they didn't know any better with the industrial revolution that really hit Australia that hadn't quite hit um, their home villages of Cyprus uh, when they left. So white refined bread, uh, white refined sugar, margarine, you know, we had Coca-Cola with every meal. So it was a real mis mixed bag. On the one hand, we had homegrown uh, vegetables and home cooked food, particularly Greek food. But then we also had all this modern processed industrialized food that was stripped of all nutrition and toxic to the human body. And mum and dad didn't know that, you know, it was that bad for us. So, you know, I had cavities in my teeth and I kept breaking bones, you know, as a kid and a lot of colds and flus and sniffles and, you know, the side slider sniffle mum would whisk us off to a doctor for antibiotics. Cause once again, she didn't know any better, you know, bless her cotton socks. She did the best job she could. Um, so it was kind of like, I, I was kind of living in these two worlds and, you know, the Gold Coast, it was, you know, I, I feel so blessed to have lived in, uh, you know, in a place where I got plenty of sunshine. I grew up at the beach, you know, which is such good, clean, honest fun in the sun. Um, but yet having that ethnicity and mum and dad very much involved in the Greek Orthodox Church and wanting me to, you know, shield me from kind of Anglo influences, it was a bit tortuous in that respect as well. Um, and it wasn't until my, I stepped into adulthood that I kind of really learned how to marry the two worlds together, like my nationality of being Australian with my Greek ethnic, you know, my ethnicity and being really proud of that today and kind of merging, you know, the, the Greek um, food into and weaving it into my, my food and my cooking now. So whole food foodizing, I call it my mum's recipes. So they're, you know, this beautiful Greek influence done in a healthy way. So it's actually really nice to sort of weave in my ethnicity and my culture into the work I do today. Fantastic. And 
when you were growing up, did you always want to be a lawyer or how did you become a lawyer? Or did you No, I didn't want know to? what I wanted to I didn't know what I wanted to do at all. Like I always had an interest in health and nutrition. And, you know, I remember asking mum, you know, to buy me magazines about health and nutrition. And I was always fascinated by it. And I guess I had a deep yearning and desire, not that I would articulate it like that at the time, but a desire to, I guess, be the best possible version of myself. Not that, you know, I kind of said it in those words, but that was kind of like a deep longing. It's like, okay, okay, what, what can I put in my body, put into my body that, you know, can make me tick and thrive and be the, that best possible version of myself. I was also, you know, very organized um, when it came to administrative things. So um, when I finished high school, I had no idea what I wanted to do. I got into medicine, I got into law, and literally it was like tossing a coin as to which one I wanted to do. I enrolled in medicine and then I pulled out before the semester started and ended up enrolling in law, finished my commerce law degree, did really well, you know, uh, honours, uh, university medal, landed a job at a top tier law firm. Um, but, you know, it was when I had my health crises that I really kind of the universe catapulted me back into that path of, of health and wellness. It was like, you know, the universe has, I think there's, there's a divine that kind of guides us. And, you know, we might think we have a plan to go down path A, but the universe is like, no, 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 you're really destined for path B. But the great thing about, you know, I don't regret doing commerce law. It's, you know, really taught me to, you know, how to set up a business, how to manage it, how to be organized, how to write, um, how to express my message uh, to the world. So, you know, there's no regrets and everything happens for a reason. Oh, totally agree with you 100%. So where, where do people get hold of you or can you explain how they get onto your programs and what happens yeah. in those programs? Yeah, sure. So my website is www.staranisorganic.com. So it's like the little herb, staranisorganic.com. Um, so on the workshops page, um, there's a series of workshops there. There's online workshops. So you can buy one of my cooking classes individually, but they all come included in the food as medicine digital package, which is basically the best value. So you get six in that food as medicine digital package. You hear um, Marika Rodenstein and I talk together for about six hours on the fundamentals of robust nutrition, robust gut health, how to create a healthy home. You get a 60 page how-to manual that sets you up for life. Um, all five of my cooking classes. So if people are really confused and don't know where to start about cleaning up their diet and lifestyle, the food as medicine package is really the best place to start. It's designed to give you all the tools and resources you need to live a vibrant life. So everything from meal formulas for breakfast, lunch and dinner, recommended practitioners, where to shop, the questions to ask for, um, everything. It's designed to be comprehensive. It's what you would get if you came to me in a one-on-one -on -one health coaching session. Plus you get to hear Marika Rodenstein talk which, and she's phenomenal on gut health, which is very topical because the seat of our health lies in our gut. I also run every month um, what I call Healthy Homes, Healthy Swap workshops where I educate people either in person or via, via Zoom on how to clean up the chemicals in their home and kick the chemicals that are endocrine disrupting, carcinogenic, neurotoxic, allergenic, basically all of that and Healthy Swap to um, all natural, super powerful, um, safe, cost effective versions at their own pace. You know, as something is running out, it's just healthy swapping. It's, this is not about a life of deprivation. It's just about, it's a life of healthy swaps. Yeah. And so he healthy swapping. And I teach people how to do that, what brands to buy. So we really hold people's hands and support them and nurture them and give them access to all our information. So you can check all that out on the workshops page of my website. On my website, there's also recipes, there's blogs, um, there's my online store. So we do ship. Um, our activated nuts Australia wide and all our refrigerated um, and frozen goods, our broths and soups and pâtés and um, sauerkraut and kombucha um, to New South Wales. Uh, so yeah, I think the website is basically one st the first 
place to go. And also I'm very active on social media. So my Instagram, it's just Star and East Organic, um, which is my favorite place to hang out in the social media world. So uh, drop me a line there, send me a message, say hi. That's wonderful. And um, there's so many people who are under stress right now with COVID and lockdown globally. And I know you work globally. And um, maybe you could describe what was going in your mind and how you were feeling when you first got really sick. Because I know when we're in stress and burnout, you know, our whole body and mind can collapse. And, um, you know, how can you help people? through this, you know, maybe you can share your story, how you were feeling personally. And did you think you were going to die? And obviously you mentioned your 11 month old baby was really sick as well. Yeah. So th those feelings of just powerlessness and helplessness, I never want anybody else to experience those again, which is why I do the work I do. So if you are not feeling well, do not just shrug and accept that and say, that's just my lot in life. I just have to put up with it. You should be able to get over something within a few days. And if you can't, my advice is reach out for help. There is so much support now. There's functional medicine practitioners. There's, you know, knowledgeable naturopaths. There's holistic dietitians. There's people like me that can basically steer you in the right direction or do a health coaching session. Or my food as medicine digital package is a, a great place to start. But my advice is have a look at those eight pillars or foundations of health because. I know it's really easy to blame our parents for our health woes and go, oh, that's just my lot in life. It's the hard-coded genes that I inherited from my parents. There's nothing I can do about that. <laughs> Modern science actually tells us that the genes we inherit from our parents are only responsible for a very, very small fraction of our health. And our health is, in fact, largely influenced by a number of different environmental or lifestyle factors. And, they, and these are what we call the eight foundations or pillars of health. So every time I've gotten sick, I stand back and I go, okay, let's have a look at these eight pillars, like a little bit of a checklist, and let's see which ones are neglected. And lo and behold, there'll be a few of those eight balls lying on the floor. So either I'm not dialing in my diet or I'm eating a diet that's not nutrient dense, I'm not eating enough animal fat, so there'll be something wrong in my diet or I'm not drinking, drinking enough or drinking tap water instead of filtered water, or I won't be moving my body, which is so important, or I might not see the light of day. I remember going through for a period of one month, um, a winter, winter was back in 2017. I got influenza because I just lack of vitamin D. My vitamin D levels were just like the lowest ever. Or stress. Now, stress in and of itself can cause your health to unravel faster than just about anything because it sucks nutrients from your system. It can cause a leaky gut. It can cause your brain cells to literally die. So managing your stress is really important. And there's lots and lots of tools in our health, in our stress toolbox that I share with people. Um, being in a relationship or a job that isn't setting your soul on fire will cause a general malaise, which in turn will, can lead to illness and disease. So really being honest with yourself um, and asking yourself, you know, is this relationship or is this job, you know, where I really want to be, you know, and finding a tribe, you know, and that's what I've tried to create or have created um, with Star and East Organic Whole Foods. We've got, you know, a beautiful um, low tox tribe. We've got, you know, our Star and East Organic Whole Foods food tribe, you know, and the two, there's a big overlap between the two. Um, so many mums hang out, at, hang out at Broth Bar because they just love mingling with other like-minded people that are on the same page of trying to lead a less toxic, more nourishing life. And I think particularly in the past year with COVID, with the polarization of the world, it's become even more important to lean into a like-minded tribe. So um, yeah, looking at those, you know, the eight foundations and really being honest with yourself. And if you dial them all in, 99% of the time, you just start firing on all six cylinders, you know, and come and, you know, see me for support, look at my online program, reach out, don't suffer in silence. That, that's really good advice. And you hit um, the nail on the head by saying you have to be truly honest with yourself, because 
that's what I find with my clients when I speak with them. The most difficult part is when you're under stress, you don't have the time to slow down and you don't think. And to just look within and be honest, am I happy? And a lot of time people are not happy with their lives. So, but they can't see the big picture. It's too, too much hassle. They'll put up with a lot of things, both men and women. They'll put up with a bad relationship. They'll see their job as a means to paying the bills instead of doing something that they truly love and, you know, makes their fire, their passion come alive. So have you got any success stories that you'd like to share? Obviously not telling the person's names that have joined one of your programs. I'm sure you've got hundreds. Oh, so many. Like I've got, I'm so blessed to receive, you know, thousands of testimonials over the years saying, you know, I've helped so many people, which is just, you know, for me, it's so humbling and beautiful. And I do it because, you know, I want to be of service to others. So from people that were told, you know, they'll never be able to have a baby again and they're, you know, sterile or infertile to then, you know, dialing in their diet and other lifestyle factors and, you know, producing a lovely baby or being told that surgery is going to be you know, out of action for X number of months and then they just bounce back so quickly uh, to also empowering women financially. So women leaving jobs that don't set their soul on fire and moving into the health and wellness space and teaming with me and sharing products that make a positive impact on people's lives. And in doing so, they make an, you know, an impact as well as an income um, yeah. and be able to, you know, move to a city or a country that they really want to live in, leave a corporate life. You know, things like that are just so wonderful. At the end of the day, we, you know, are the designers of our own life. And if you're not stepping into that role, you know, come and have a chat and, you know, we can work out what it is that you want to do. But I think getting your health sorted first and foremost is so important because when you're operating under health issues and brain fog, the amount of energy that you need to expend just getting through the day, you know, it's too much for some people then to make massive wholesale changes and, you know, leave a toxic relationship or a job. They don't have the energy, the clarity, the bandwidth, the space. Whereas if you dial in the diet and other lifestyle factors, that's going to give you the energy, the bandwidth, the space, the platform, you know, truly phenomenal platform to then be able to make big other lifestyle changes like changing a vocation, leaving a toxic relationship, you know, leaving a moldy house, you know, so I think it's, this is why I do the work I do that I think the diet and lifestyle factors are really foundational, really dial those in first and foremost, you'll just feel more vibrant you raise your vibrational frequency, your consciousness and your intuition. And when your intuition is clearer and you can tap into that, you will know what to do. The next right step is just there in front of you. Yes, totally agree with everything you've said so far. And I know a lot of people, like I've done many interviews and over the years I've done lots of Feng Shui courses. And, you know, we have to declutter our external environment so we have a healthy internal environment. And also people um, are so quick to buy products and put on their skin. And they don't realize that everything you put on your skin is going into our bloodstream. And that can make us really sick as well. So it's wonderful that you, you are able to offer all different advice on what we eat, and what we're thinking and also what we're putting on our skin. So can you share three success tips? If someone is starting out a new business, wants to go in health and wellness, what would your advice be to them? Uh, if they want to move into the health and wellness space, well, it's, I mean, it's a very broad question. I guess it depends if they want to work one-on-one -on -one with people or want to do everything online. Like some people still love that face-to-face -face interaction and the traditional consulting, like what, you know, naturopaths do. Other people are like, I just want to move everything online. I do a combination of both, you know, maybe look at what aspect of health and wellness. Some people are kind of broad like me and look at, you know, all of 
those pillars other people just really dial into say movement and end up becoming a PT. So kind of just asking yourself, you know, what do you love to do? Where do you think your talents are and how can you impart that to somebody else and get that message across? You know, some people do everything on social media. Some people don't use social media at all. So, I mean, it's, it's such a broad question, but don't be afraid to pivot and change. So within my businesses, we're always, you know, pivoting and changing and trying different things and, and you know, working in different ways and, and, you know, to find what suits and what might suit at one point in, in time, might not suit at another point in time. So, for example, I think everyone now is completely kind of quite over Zoom webinars and people are just craving face-to-face. -face. So I've started running more um, live group workshops and people are flocking to those. It's like, oh, they just want the hug. They want to be in the presence of someone. You know, they want to have a sit down and have a cup of tea, um, you know, with someone and have a chat and a talk. So, you know, it's really interesting changing times and we have to just adapt um, as yeah. we go, adapt or die, you know? <laughs> yeah. Very good advice. Um, what, what, if there was one thing, if you could look back, and you could have done differently, what would it have been? Um, I probably would have, it would have been nice to have had a, a formal qualification in, in nutrition. Not that it's in any way has held me back and, you know, I've had thousands of health coaching clients and no one has really cared or asked that, you know, the, oh my God, you don't, you don't have a formal qualification nutrition, therefore I'm not going to bother with you because people can see I'm so well read and I have so much knowledge. And, you know, for me, it's like, take it or leave it. And it's, you know, it hasn't actually held me back. And I guess when I started on this journey 15 years ago, there was no course other than conventional dietetics um, and I would literally have just thrown the textbook at the lecturer and could not have been able to sit through that. So my mentor at the time said, you know, you'd hate doing that so much. You're doing great as is. Just keep doing what you're doing. Keep making food. Keep educating people on how to make it and why it's so good for them. You know, keep talking to people one-on-one -on -one and in groups and, you know, you're doing great. And it just kind of burgeoned from, from there. So it hasn't actually held me back. So I don't know if it actually is a regret or I would have done things differently. Um, <clears throat> I try not to kind of spend too much energy in thinking what would I have done differently? Because as I said earlier, I think everything happens for a reason. Um, you know, sometimes I think, oh gosh, I wish I kind of discovered or explored, for example, Young Living Essential Oils in my 20s, rather than, you know, when I was in my you know, early 40s. Um, and I could have, you know, helped and impacted more people in terms of, you know, wearing essential oils instead of perfumes or, you know, ditching all the chemicals in their house with Young Living products. But I don't think I was ready to hear it. It wasn't until yeah. my mold incident in 2016, which caused my health to unravel, having perfect having had perfect health for the past 10 years since adopting a nutrient dense traditional ancestral diet. And then all of a sudden in beginning of 2016, mine and my kids health unraveled out of the blue for months on end with major respiratory issues and hacking cough and copious amounts of mucus. And it was from mold and someone handed me that bottle of Young Living Thieves essential oil and, and you know, it radically changed my life. And then went on to educating people on, you know, the power of potent plant medicine in the form of essential oils and thieves oil as a way to kill mold in your system and in your house. And now run a lot of, you know, workshops on that. Um, and actually the person who gave me that bottle of thieves when I was sort of, you know, on my way of recovering from mold illness, she actually said to me, I tried to talk to you about Young Living several years ago, but you just weren't interested. So I think you've got to be ready like you can yeah. plant seeds, but I think people have to come to things in their own time when they feel pulled. And often it's, there's a catalyst, you know, yeah. there's got to, that. sometimes people have to hit rock bottom before they're really open to something, you know, when you could be staying there saying, I told you so. And it's like, yeah, but they weren't ready to hear it. So sometimes it's, you know, sad as it is, particularly with family and close friends, you've got to let people fall into that ditch yeah. <laughs> that you've fallen into and it's not a really happy place. But all you can do is say, when you fall into that ditch, I'll be there to give you a gentle landing and to help you with the ladder and to help you up and through it. You know, I, th I think that's, that's all we can do as humans. 
Yeah, that's wonderful. And um, as an aromatherapist, I've been living and breathing aromatherapy all of the years. And um, I also use thieves for absolutely everything. It's so powerful. And so powerful. Yes, yes. And I'll um, just say, uh, Beverly, just as an adjunct, if people are interested in exploring that, please look at the um, information on the essential oils page of my website, fill out the contact form and someone in my team or myself will be in contact. Don't go and onto the website and sign yourself up because you won't get the wealth of our intellectual property and our personalized support, which is what we offer when you want to go low tox. So make sure you come through us and we can support you. So all the information's on the essential oils page of my website. Yeah. Fantastic. And if there was one thing you could do to change the world, what would it be? I would say that people need to start operating more from a place of love and not from a place of fear. So I think some of the seeming chaos that's happened when you kind of unravel it, they're all fear-based decisions. And when you understand trust and respect the sanctity of your wise biology, you know that it knows exactly what to do to heal, defend and protect itself, regardless of what is around us and will become even more resilient, both physically, emotionally and spiritually. So when you come from that place of strength and resilience and understanding, which is really a place of love, and not from a place of fear. Yes. But to stand into that place and power, you need to really meet your body halfway and saturate your body with nourishment in all its forms across all eight foundations and remove the toxic load across all those eight pillars of health so that your body can then really be the most strong, resilient version of itself. And then you've got nothing to fear and you're standing and coming from a place of strength and power and not operating under a place of, from a place of fear. Wonderful. And I totally agree. Love is the medicine. It is the key to happiness and success. And on that note, I would like to say Gratitude is also a wonderful way to raise your vibration and one of the highest energies. So I'm very grateful for you giving up your precious time today and sharing your wonderful words of wisdom and knowledge. So thank you very much. Oh, it's my absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for having me, Beverly. Thank you.